parallel and perpendicular vector equations of lines. If you're given two lines in 3D space in vector equation form or in the equivalent parametric form, you need to be able to determine whether they are coplanar, are they parallel, do they intersect, are they perpendicular, uh, or are they skew. So you need to be able to characterize the relationship between the two lines. So we're going to start with parallel uh, vector equations. And so here I've drawn two lines which are parallel to each other. And let's call them L1 and L2. And you can arrive at the vector equation in many different ways. So this point was popular last lesson. So I could have this as my position vector and I could have then, let's take the shorter one. So I'll take this point here. Uh, have this as the vector which is parallel to the line to give me the the direction vector. And uh, for the other line, let's um, find a nice point here's one. What is that? Minus two, three. I'll write the points out in a second. So that could be the position vector for that particular line. And its direction vector, let's on purpose make it longer. Right, it may not be the best decision, but uh, it doesn't matter. So there are an infinite, as we discussed last lesson, there are an infinite number of ways to express the vector equation of a line. If we look at uh, what those points are then, just zoom in for a second. So this one here is two, three, and this one then is at two to x, uh, four, four. This one's minus two, three, backwards two and up three. Uh, and then this is two, one, two, three, four, five, two, five. And we, what we're going to need are the rise over run. So if I just move you out of the way so I can draw there. Uh, that's going to be two up and one, two, three, four across. That's so small. <laughs> two, four, and this direction here. I wonder if I can grab those. Oh, I can. I'll just put you there. Oh, we missed the two. Try it again. Oh, good. That point there is two, three. Maybe if you're a little out of the way, I'll put you up there too. And this will make it easier for me when I'm trying to decide the, uh, trying to write out the position, uh, the direction vectors. And that one is uh, two across and one up. Okay, let's return the screen to normal. Can I get the width of the page? Oh, too much. Yeah, there we go. All right. So my equation for L1 then, and this we saw from last lesson. So L1, not Li, L1 is two in the I direction plus three in the J direction plus, and I'm going to subscript the Scalar values, not that it matters terribly much. 2i plus j as we worked out, 2, 2, 1. And gathering those together, it's 2 lambda plus 2 in the i direction, plus lambda plus 3 in the j direction. And L2 then is minus 2i, minus 2 in the i direction, minus 3 in the j direction, plus here's my scalar times my direction vector, which we looked at is 4 to the right, 4i, and it goes 2 up to j. And collecting all those together, 
I have 4 lambda minus 2 in the i direction, and I have 2, oh, I was subscripting the lambdas here, 2, lambda 2 minus 3 in the j direction. All right, so if we look at the uh, if we look at the direction vectors, try and be a little neater here. If we look at the uh, direction, got a lot to write. Try and be neat. Uh, direction, uh, not vectors. Direction numbers. And for I keep running a lie. L one. They are 2 is to 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. And for L2, they are uh, 4, 2. For uh, writing as a ratio or fraction, so I can simplify this thing down, and that becomes 2 is to 1. And so we see that these things are in fact equal. So it implies that they are parallel, which is not a surprise. We were expecting that, of course. Uh, and so we can see that the ratio, if the ratio of the direction numbers is the same, then the lines must be parallel. So that brings us to our first fact that we must uh, we must know so where shall I write that over here so two let me write smaller getting out of, out of control so two lines are parallel if their direction numbers are in the same ratio. Direction numbers are in the same ratio. Uh, two lines parallel, so direction numbers are in the same ratio. All right. And since that's important, let's put a red box around it. There we go. All right, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Next up, uh, what uh, from last lesson, of course, the one of the major points I was trying to get across is the fact that there are an infinite number of ways to express that particular uh, vector equation. So, uh, if you have, if you've determined that they're parallel, you next need to check whether they're in fact the same line. So, if you have two different uh, expressions for the same line. They're known as coincident. So beware. Coincident lines. I'd like to underline that, please. Thank you. Right, so from last time, if I borrow the equations from last lesson, last doesn't need to be capitalized. From last lesson, We had two lines, and let's reuse the subscripts. We're in a separate section. That's allowable, I think. We had four lambda. We had two expressions for the same line. Uh, four lambda is two i plus copying this from last note, last lesson's notes plus three two lambda plus three j, and we had l two. 
minus two lambda. Uh, because I am expressing both lines at the same time, so I want unique scalars minus lambda plus one in a j. All right, so these were two expressions for the same line. Now, a good way to test for this, hang on, let's, 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 let's look at these a little closer. So in terms of, uh, in terms of the, that's a bit hard to pick out now. Um, what do I want to look at? So, um, never mind, lost my train of thought. Uh, that's, I know the point, I know the point two, three lies on that first line. Uh, so if lambda is zero, uh, I'm going to have, have uh, 2i, 3j. I know that 2, 3 lies on that particular point. So I can take the point uh, 2, 3 and see if it lies on L2. So uh, if I, I know P1, if I call it P1, I know that 2, 3 lies on L1. Uh, so let's test to see if P1 lies on L2, right? And of course, if it lies on the second line, uh, they're parallel, uh, so they must in fact be the same line. So let's take the uh, parametric equations for L2. So I'll have x equals this thing, minus 2 lambda 2 minus 2, and y is this one, minus lambda plus 1. It looks like an i written there. Let me go back and... That's just meant to be, oh, hello, it won't erase. Let me select it then. Gone. So I have these two uh, parameter equations. And I'm going to look at two, right? So at x equals two. Uh, this implies that I have 2 equals minus 2 lambda 2 minus 2, which will give me lambda equals minus 2 when I solve that for lambda, easy peasy. And then I substitute this value uh, into the other parametric equation. So. So substitute this value for the parameter into the other parametric equation. So I have y equals minus, uh, it's minus minus 2, 
plus one going into this one here, uh, which gives me three. And three is indeed the other point. So therefore, two, three lies on that line. Which is the value at, we call that P1. So therefore, two, three lies, whoops, lies on both parallel lines. So the only way that can happen is if in fact they are the same line, therefore the lines are, what we call it coincident, coincident. So there are two expressions for the same line. All right. Uh, again, this difficulty arises because there's an infinite number of ways to express the vector equation of lines. So if you're given two of them and they find that they're parallel, you need, then need to check whether they're in fact the same line to check if they're coincident. All right. So let's grab an example of them being perpendicular. Can I fit it on the bottom of this page? Let's try. So. Uh, perpendicular. Perpendicular vector equations of lines, parallel vector equations. Yeah, I don't think we need the of lines, just to be consistent with what I've done at the top. Okay, and I'd like to underline that. Thank you. Try and make the notes as neat as possible. Uh, perpendicular vector equations, and hopefully over here, I've got this thing already set up, so copy that one. Come back, paste. Ooh, it doesn't quite fit. Oh, let's move the whole show. Let's move the whole show. Stop snapping. Thank you. Uh, I'll put you there. And, oops, I want to move you now. Change my mind. You can come down, be at the top of this page. Oh, this is looking good. All right. Uh, perpendicular. So here I've picked a couple of lines. And again, this uh, this line I've really been picking on a lot. Let's call that one L1. And I have something which is perpendicular to it, which are called L2. Um, and let's decide on how we're going to Let's do the same here. So I did. Yeah. Let's do the same here. So this can be the position vector. This can be the direction vector. And this doesn't look right. This is not right. Why is this? Something's happened in the copying and pasting. Let me, sorry, folks. Let me go back and try that again, because it looks right here. Copy, come here, paste. Not quite sure what happened there. All right, so I'm sure you watching on the video saw my mistake. Can you please, yes, thank you. And ease that into position right there, line it up with the grid. All right, let's try that again. 
So this hasn't changed. I want that point and that one. Here's my position vector. Here's my direction vector. And this one, I've picked it because I want it to go to that point there. And that one up there, I guess. Purposefully making it stupidly long just to display, just to, you know, highlight the fact that it really can be anything you want. These points, if I zoom in, this one, as we had before, this is a 2, 3, this one is 4, 4, this point in here is minus 1, 3, this one up here is minus 3, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this will make it easier to decide what the direction vectors are. So it's going backwards by 2. Well, no, let's have minus 2. And it's going up by 1, 2, 3, 4. So that slope is minus 2. This one's going across 2 and up 1. So that slope is half. All right, so that should make it easier for me to write out the equations for these things. So I haven't labeled them, so this is L1, this is L2. L1 then, L1 is 2i plus 3j for the position vector. Oops. J for the position vector and the direction vector is 2i plus a single j and let's collect, let's go all the way. So we'll collect these together. So 2 lambda 1 plus 2 in the i direction plus a lambda plus 3 in the j direction and the parametric equations then are x equals this one 2 lambda 1 plus 2 and the other one y is lambda 1 plus 3 l2 That's the position vector is minus i plus 3j plus scalar times we said was minus 2i plus 4 upwards in the j direction, collecting those together. I have minus 2 lambda minus 1 in the i direction, and I have 4 lambda plus 3 in the j direction. And my, let me subscript these, my parametric equations then are x is minus 2 lambda 2 minus 1, and my second one is 4 lambda 2 plus 3. Oops, 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 oops. Ah. Y, 2. All right, looks good. Got the full set. All right, so. Uh, now, if this was only in two dimensions, then it becomes quite easy to decide that these, or to determine if these things are perpendicular. I can simply look at, give me another color. I can simply look at the, uh, I have 2, 1 here as, as a slope. And here I have, 
uh, two across, one up, so it's half. So this thing gives me half, and this thing gives me minus two. So it's the negative reciprocal of each other. So the lines are parallel, and we do that normally in uh, Cartesian equations. However, in three dimensions, uh, this becomes a little more difficult. Uh, and so we need to, the easiest way to do this is to look at the dot product. So if the dot product, you know already from your earlier studies that the uh, the dot product of two perpendicular vectors is zero. And so you take the dot product of the direction vectors here uh, for these two lines, and uh, it should be zero. It should be zero. So uh, let's, let's get into that. So let's look at just the direction vectors then. So the direction, that's right here, direction, direction vector of the first line, well, that's gone off the screen, it's here, 2i plus the j, 2i plus the j, and the direction vector of L2, that's here, minus 2i plus 4j. And if I take the dot product then, I have oops, my eye looks a little funny. Two I oh gee. Lift the pen, lift the pen. Two I plus J dot minus two I plus four J. And the dot product is super easy. It's this one times this one. So 2 times minus 2, and you add to it those values, so it's 1 times 4, and that's minus 4 plus 4, which gives me 0. All right, so therefore L1 is perpendicular. I dotted that L1 again. <laughs> L1 is perpendicular to L2. Done. All right. So again, in two dimensions, this is trivial, but in three, it becomes a little more difficult. But the dot product is easy in any number of dimensions. Uh, and so if that, if that dot product is zero, then the lines must have been perpendicular. All right, now, because two lines are perpendicular doesn't necessarily mean they're coplanar. They could be in different planes. Uh, again, in my example, I'm just doing it in two dimensions, but in three dimensions, uh, you need to know if, they, uh, if the perpendicular lines are indeed uh, in the same plane or not. And a good way to test if two perpendicular lines are in the same plane is to simply see if they intersect. All right, so if they intersect, if they're perpendicular and they intersect, then they must, be, well, if they intersect full stop, they must be in the same plane, but if they, uh, if they're perpendicular, that's not enough to say that they're in the same plane. We need them to intersect as well. So let's move on to determining whether two lines intersect. So intersection or intersecting, doesn't matter, intersecting vector equations of lines. Underline, please. Lovely. All right. Uh, so I'm going to continue on with the above example, uh, but uh, this can be, you know, um, done for any two lines. Don't have to be perpendicular. But uh, in the carrying on with the example, so if the if the above 
to perpendicular lines intersect, then they are in the same plane. And that's, that's called coplanar. All right, so how do we do that? We need to, uh, um, we need to uh, attempt to find values for both parametric equations, uh, for both, so I have these things here. If I can find uh, values that's, that are for the parameters that satisfy them all simultaneously, then they must be in the same plane. Then they must intercept at some point. So therefore they must be in the same plane. So I attempt to find values for both parameters that satisfy satisfy all parametric equations simultaneously. So if I write out the ones that I have for x and I equate them, so I want to equate this one and this one. So, oh, I need to see them too. Okay, memory, two lambda one plus two. So two lambda one plus two equals the other one, minus two lambda minus one. Oops, my lambda's getting out of control. Two lambda two minus one. My parameters for y are lambda one plus three. And the second one is four lambda two plus three. Four lambda two plus three. Now, uh, in this case, there's nothing for z. That would be zero of zero. I'll just put it here to remind ourselves that the reason we're going to such lengths is because of doing it in three dimensions. Uh, of course, if they were intersecting. If I, had, if I was in a Cartesian plane, I could just solve the two lines simultaneously. It doesn't work like that in uh, in three dimensions because I can't express I can't express one three dimensional line in a single Cartesian style equation. You just end up with a plane. Yeah, I, I need to define it as two the intersection of two planes. Um, but that's not the topic of discussion for today. So. Uh, I'll put the z here just to, to show that it works. Uh, now, I'm, I need to solve for these things, so let me uh, set up the usual, uh, just for fun, let's call that three. And so if I have, uh, uh, they look good to try and eliminate. So if I put two times the first one, two times the first one, and I add that to the second one, I end up with five lambda ones plus seven gives me that's zero, which is what I wanted. And then a minus one plus three is one, which will give me lambda one equals minus seven on, no, minus six on five, minus six on five. 
Okay. And I take this value and I stuff that into the other one now. So, well, it doesn't really matter which, but uh, this value, just trying to describe what I'm doing, this value into one, say, then two times minus six on five, plus that two equals minus two number two, and two minus one, uh, lambda 2 is uh, oh, fraction work. Uh, minus 12 on 5 plus 3. And then I've got the minus 2 to divide by. Oof, that's uh, 3 fives of 15 on 5. 15 on 5 and minus 12 is 3 on 5 divided by 2 is 3 on 10 and minus, oops, just come down a bit. What did I say? Minus 3 on 10. Just to be clear, lambda 2. Oh, my lambda is getting terrible. Okay. That's lambda 2. Uh, so at this point, you'd then have to then see if it satisfies the third equation in three dimensions. Right? You'd have to stick it back into here. Uh, in this case, it does automatically. But uh, let's just write the little note. Um, at this point in three dimensions, you would have to check if lambda 1 and lambda 2 satisfied, satisfied, it's called the Z equation. Right. Uh, anyway, so these two these two values satisfy all equations. Oops. So the lines intersect. All right, so remember our example that we're working with, these are um, perpendicular lines, so therefore these perpendicular lines are coplanar. All right, so that brings us to the point of the matter. So two lines intersect if there exists values for both parameters that satisfy iPads lagging for both parameters that satisfy all parametric equations simultaneously. For both parameters that whoops satisfy satisfy spelled that right but satisfy all parametric equations. At the same time, simul 
Simultaneously. Oops, and I want a red box. Come on. Yeah. Uh, back to blue. Now, uh, you've determined that they are, in fact, they intersect. If you're interested as to find as to where, uh, then you substitute these values uh, back into the uh, respective parametric equation, and then it'll give you the value. So, Place, you just need one of them. So find, to find the point of intersection, place one of the found parameter values back into its respective oh, my writing, come on, parameter values back into its respective. So if you found lambda 1, you've got to put it back in where lambda 1 goes. Respective parametric equations. And you have to do it for x, y, and z. So our value for lambda 1 then was minus 6 on 5. Uh, we put this into our parametric equation for x1. Where are you? 2 lambda 1 plus 2. Two lamb oh man two lambda one plus two and the y parametric equation for y where are you lambda one plus three lambda one plus three and just to note that we haven't got about it in Z as well. Um, this gives us X equals 2 is 12, minus 12 and 5, minus 12 plus 10, minus 2 on 5, Y uh, 15, minus 6 is 9 on 5. 9 on 5, and that one won't change. And so the uh, the lines intersect at the these three coordinates. So that is lines intersect at x equals minus 2 on 5, y equals 9 on 5, Z is at zero. So minus two and five, nine and five, minus two and five, nine and five. Let's go back to the actual little diagram. Minus two and five, nine and five, minus two and five. Does that look like, oh, let me use another color. Minus two and five. Yeah, I believe it. And so 1.8 we need. So that height there is 1.8. Yeah, looks like it. Get back to the width. There we go, thank you. All right, so they look correct. All right, so uh, 
this seems to be a mess. Is uh, let's try and derive a um, a strategy for investigating this now to put all this together. So when I first started, I I had different e examples because I need them to the answer to be yes. But you'd start out by trying to find whether two lines are parallel, and if so, just check that they're not coincidence, or if they are, uh, then they're in fact the same line. Uh, then check to see if they're perpendicular. If they, and then in any case, you need to then move on to see whether they intersect. So if they intersect, um, they're in the same plane, and if they don't, then they're skew, and then they could be perpendicular and skew. Uh, uh, whether they're perpendicular or not is a, it's an additional property of the two lines. All right, so let's see. So generally, generally, when investigating two lines, whoops. Two lines in three dimensions, it's called 3D. I'd like to underline that. Lovely. So back to a pen. So step one. Uh, Step one is to is to ask or is to investigate it. Are they parallel? Are they parallel? And so if it's yes, then The next question to ask is, are they the same line? Then are they... No, 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 no. If they're parallel, then they must be in the same plane. So that's another property. So they definitely, they're coplanar at that point. Uh, so if yes, then, let's write that first. Then they are coplanar. Possible for it to be otherwise. Um, all right. Uh, parallel is the other important property. If they're parallel, then they are coplanar. Have to be, must be true. Uh, and then check. Uh, so if yes. Um, are they coplanar? Ah, uh, coplanar. Are they coincident? Are they the same line? And at that point, uh, you have to stop. You've you've done your investigation. So if they're parallel and they're not coincident, you, you, you're done. There's nothing else to look at. Uh, so you need to stop. Uh, and then stop. All right, you're done. If they're not parallel, you need to then. I guess the order doesn't really matter. You do this after the fact, but uh, are they perpendicular? And it doesn't matter what the outcome of that is, whether it's a yes or no, you still need to move on to the next, oops, you still need to move on to the Still need to move on to the next step. So determine if they're perpendicular. Uh, what do I want? 
blue pen, a uh, green pen, green for this little step. And step three then is to try and work out do they intersect. All right, so if yes, then they're coplanar. Right. Again, the property you're trying to determine, or one of them, and if they don't intersect, if they don't, and they are not parallel, right, because of course parallel lines never intersect, so if they don't and they're not parallel, uh, then they uh, skew. Uh, underline please, thank you, right, full stop. All right, so check firstly to see whether they are parallel. If they are, oops, <laughs> wrong. Ah, oh, the undo is not working. Oh, because I exited out. Okay, delete. Thank you. Firstly, check to see if they're parallel, and if they are, if they are, check to see if they're in fact the same line, because there are an infinite number of ways to express a line as a vector equation, uh, and if they are, then you. You are done. Check to see if they're perpendicular and uh, whether they are or not is not going to stop you from going on to step three because you need to then check to see uh, if they intersect. If they intersect, uh, they must be coplanar. They've got to be in the same plane in order to intersect. Uh, if they do, uh, if they don't, then they must be in different planes, which means they're skew. But they can still be skew and perpendicular, right? Uh, very important. Okay, well that does it for this lesson. I'm Keith Johnston, thanks for watching.